Hello and welcome back to our series on electrical and computer engineering. Our conversation tonight is about two very powerful techniques of analysis, voltage dividers and current dividers. How many times when you have seen or have been part of a team of tug of war, you've wondered how much of the total effort was being put by each one of the members of the team? Well, electrical engineers ask themselves these questions whenever we see several resistors in series and a total voltage applied to the total. We wonder, of that voltage, how many of those volts drop in each one of the resistors in series? That is a voltage divider. And also analogously, when we see a bunch of resistors in parallel and we pour a current to that group of parallel resistors, how much of the total current will flow through each one of the different resistors in parallel? That is a current divider. Let's see how this works, eh? Let's begin. We commence with a review of Ohm's law. In a resistor, if we know the current and the resistance, we can compute the voltage like that. Ri is the voltage in the resistor. But if what we know is the voltage and the current, we can compute the value of the resistor's resistance. R is V over I. And finally, if we know the voltage and the resistance, we can determine the current as V over R. That expression can be written also this way if we only remember that G, the conductance, is the inverse of the resistance in Siemens. Only one M, uppercase S. I is GV, equivalent to this expression. This is only another expression of Ohm's law. The current is proportional to the voltage across the resistor. We expect that when two guys like this two, a big one on the left and a little one on the right, when they're carrying a common weight, the big one takes most of the load and the little one takes less of the load. They split the load according to their capabilities. Now, let's review what is a voltage divider. A voltage applied to a pair of resistors in series like this two it gets divided between the two resistors. That voltage, VAB, applied to the totem of two resistors gets split between R1 and R2. The question is, how much of that voltage gets each one of the resistors? R1 gets V1 and R2 gets V2. The current I flowing through the branch will produce a voltage drop V1 in the resistor R1, given by Ohm's law. V1 is R1 times the current but the same current has to flow through the resistor R2, producing a voltage drop. V2, also given by Ohm's law. V2 is R2 times the same current high. Now, the total voltage that we're splitting between R1 and R2 is the sum of V1 plus V2. If we substitute the first two equations in the third one, we obtain that the total voltage, VAB, is given by that expression total resistance times the current in the branch. Now, we want to know what percentage of the total voltage VAB is V1. Well, you say it's easy. Divide the first expression, V1 is equal to R1 times I, by the expression for VAB, divide them. So you can cancel out the current and get that V1 is the same percent of the total voltage VAB that R1 is of the total resistance R1 plus R2. Same percent. V1 is the same percent of the total voltage that R1 is of the total resistance. So if R1 is, uh, let's say, 25% of the total resistance, then its voltage V1 is going to be 25% of the total voltage VAB. The resistor, I repeat, R1, gets the same percentage of the total voltage VAB that itself is of the total resistance of the branch. If R1 is one-third of the total resistance, it gets only one-third of the total voltage. Again, the resistor R1's voltage is proportional to the total voltage that is being split. Of course, that makes sense. 
the more to split, the more each one of them is going to get, and it's proportional also to its own resistance. Now be very careful when you're trying to use a voltage divider to feed current to an equipment. Let me illustrate that with a numerical exercise. Here we have a voltage divider, 20 volts divided between two resistors of 5 ohms each. Because each one of them is 50% of the total resistance, of course, the voltage of the middle point is only 10 volts. That voltage VA is given by the voltage divider formula and is, of course, 10 volts. And we are tempted to bring in some device, some equipment that operates at 10 volts and plug it in into that voltage divider, hoping that the voltage is going to be 10 volts and the device will operate satisfactorily. But no, because the new device happens to have an equivalent resistance of 5 ohms, when we connect that in parallel with the bottom of the voltage divider, what we have there is an equivalent resistance of 2.5 ohms. Remember, 5 times 5 divided by 5 plus 5, 2.5 ohms. That means that the voltage divider now is going to give you a much lesser voltage. Why? Because 2.5 is only one-third of the total resistance of that new voltage divider. What is the total resistance of the new voltage divider? 5 plus 2.5, that is 7.5. Of course, the voltage VI is going to be only one-third of the total voltage 20, which is 6.6667 volts. Be careful. As soon as you connect a load that drains current out of the voltage divider, the voltage will not be what it used to be. As a homework, I suggest that you repeat this exercise with a new load that has 100 kilo ohms instead of 5 ohms. You've done it? And let's do that on the screen as well. We take the same voltage divider, and VA, of course, is 10 volts. And we plug in the device that has an equivalent resistance of 100 kilo ohms. 100,000 ohms. What is the equivalent resistance of the parallel of 5 with 100K? Do the math. That is 4.9998 ohms. It's almost 5. And when you do the voltage divider of 20 volts between 5 ohms and 4.9998 ohms, what you get is 9.9997 volts, which is approximately 10 volts. So for very large equivalent resistance devices, the voltage divider continues to operate very neatly. Hmm, what is the current in the new device? I of the load, 10 volts, divided by 100 kilo ohms, that is 0.1 milliamps. While the current in the voltage divider 5 ohm resistor is 10 volts, divided by 5, that is 2 ohms. Check it out. The current that the load is draining of the voltage divider is 20,000 times smaller than the current in the voltage divider. No kidding. The voltage divider is practically unloaded. Another exercise. This time, the load that we want to connect to the voltage divider is specified, not in ohms, but by the current that it will drain. 1 ampere. Check out. Same voltage divider. Connect the 1 amp load. And you say, well, wait a second. What is the voltage now Vx? I don't know what's going to be. Well, but you know that the voltage in the top 5 ohm resistor is going to be 20 volts minus Vx? Yes, it's going to be this. 20 volts minus Vx. Now, tell me one thing. This current here in blue, that current is Vx over 5. Yes, absolutely, that is a current in the bottom resistor of the voltage divider. Vx, unknown voltage, divided by the resistance 5 ohms. Why? Ohm's law, that is that current. And the current in the top resistor of the voltage divider? Voltage divided by resistance 20 minus Vx, divided by 5. Hmm, we can apply KCL to that node in the middle, can we not? Currents arriving in the node, 20 minus Vx over 5. Currents leaving the node, Vx over 5 plus 1 amp. 
there's your KCL equation. Solve for Vx, and you get that the voltage Vx is 7.5 volts. Need it is not 10 volts anymore. No, it isn't. It's less than that. By the way, what is the resistance, the equivalent resistance of the device you connected, Rx? Ohm's law. Voltage Vx divided by the current, 1 amp, that is the resistance of Rx of the device that you connected, 7.5 ohms. Let's go now for an exercise on design. We need to feed 10 volts to a certain device. The available voltage source is a 15 volt source. The device current changes its ranges during its duty cycle between a minimum of 3 milliamps and the maximum of 30 milliamps. The problem at hand is design a voltage divider that meets the needs of this device. We begin with the scheme of the voltage divider and the device already connected there. Let's write down what we know. We know that the voltage source is a 15 source. We know that we need to provide 10 volts to the device. We know the current of the device ranges between 3 milliamps and 30 milliamps. Our first task is make sure that the current that the device drains is negligible. And I know what you're thinking. What? How can I? That current is what the current is. Well, we use the Napoleon stratagem. What is that? Napoleon was actually taller than the average Frenchman of his time. He was 170. But because he was the main piece on the chessboard of battles, and he was at the same time a battle master, he would dress himself as a colonel only, and chose all his elite guards surrounding him as being very tall men for the time. 180, six foot tall men so that in the perspective of the artillery of the enemy, he would seem to be much farther away than he really was. That's smart. So Napoleon made himself look smaller by surrounding him with very tall men at the time. We're going to do the same with that current to make that 30 milliamps current look small. We put a big current in the main branch of the voltage divider. We design the voltage divider so that the top current is at least 10 times greater than the maximum current in the device. That is 10 times 30 milliamps. That is 300 milliamps. Now, if the total voltage is 15 and the bottom is 10, of course the top resistor has a voltage of 5 volts only, KVL. But if in that resistor we know the voltage 5 and we know the current 300 milliamps, we can use Ohm's law and find what is the value of that resistor R1, a voltage 5 volts divided by the current 300 milliamps, which is 0 0.3 amps, 16.7 ohms. We get a check if they really manufacture that value. We go to the table for standard resistor values with a tolerance of plus or minus 5% and check if they have the value and they don't. They have 16 and they have 18. Those are the ones that are really made in industry for that tolerance. 16 or 18. Well, we choose 16, which is the closest of the two, plus or minus 5%. What about of the resistor on the bottom of the divider? Well, 5, 10 volts. That value has to be twice the value of the top, obviously, because its voltage is twice the voltage in the top one. Approximately, that resistor is twice 16, that is 32 ohms. Again, we go to the table and check if they have 32 ohms, and they don't. They have 30 and 33, which is the one that is the closest. 33 ohms, plus or minus 5%. And we are ready now. We have a design. Or do we? For a resistor, I told you, when we saw circuit elements, we need to specify not only its ohms, but also its power rating, how much power is going to be draining so we do not end with a burnt resistor when we build the circuit. What is the power in R1? You say, well, power is V times I. The voltage 5 volts times the current 0.3 amps, that is 1.5 watts. 
That is how much power will be dissipated by R1 during the operation of this voltage divider. And the power in R2? The voltage is 10 and the current is 0 0.3 minus 0 0.03 milliamps. I chose the minimum current to make the power in R2 as big as possible. That power is about 3 watts. Now we know what those resistors are for. They have to have the values on the top in ohms and they have to be capable of handling that much power. But we know that during the duty cycle of the load, as its current changes between 3 and 3 milliamps, the voltage of the voltage divider will also change. We know that. Also, the resistor's values have a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. So let's find, under the worst possible conditions, what is the maximum voltage in the device. For maximum voltage at the load, we chose a minimum value for R1, and that is 16 ohms minus 5%, which is 15.2 ohms. And we choose the maximum value for R2, that is 33 plus 5%, which is 34.7 ohms. And what else? We choose the minimum current in the load. Those are the three conditions for maximum voltage in the load. The voltage at the bottom is unknown. We don't know what it is. We know it's in the vicinity of 10 volts, or at least we hope it is. And the voltage on the top is 15 minus the unknown x. We can now determine that the top current is equal to the sum of the device currents plus the current at the bottom. We can write a KCL equation for that node in the middle, can we not? Let's write it. Current entering the node, 15 minus x divided by 15.2 ohms currents leaving the node 3 milliamps plus x divided by 34.7 and we solve for x and that is the maximum voltage in the load in the device i'm going to use a calculator whose emulator i gave you in a previous video it's free you can download you can install it there i write the equation there i push for a solution and i get that the voltage x is 10.4 volts. That is the maximum voltage load, 10.4 volts under the worst possible conditions, right? Now we're going to find what is the minimum probable value of the voltage on the load. For that, we choose the maximum probable value of the resistor R1, which is 16 ohms plus 5 percent, 16.8 ohms, and the minimum value for R2, 33 minus 5%, 31.4 ohms. Also, the maximum current of the load, 30 milliamps. We know when the current is big, the voltage is small. With those conditions, we solve the problem for the value x, the voltage on the load on the device. That is x, this is 15 minus x. And then, with the current on the top and the bottom, and the 30 milliamps, we write a KCL equation. Again, the same thing. We use again the calculator, solve the equation and find that that voltage, which is the minimum probable voltage on the load, is 9.44. The actual voltage in that load will be somewhere between 9.44 and 10.4, depending on the values of the resistors that you purchased and depending on where in the duty cycle of the device you are. Before we leave, let's check something out. How efficient is the solution? How much power is the source providing? Well, the power in the source is V times I. V is 15, I is 300 milliamps, 0 0.3. Four and a half watts, the source is providing four and a half watts. Let's see how much actual power is absorbed, is taken by the device. The device has a voltage of about 10 volts and a current of 30 milliamps, 0 0.03 amps. That is the power in the device, 10 volts times 0 0.03 amps, 0 0.3 watts. That means that out of 4.5 watts the source is delivering, only 0 0.3 watts are being actually used by the device. What percent is that? That is 6.7%. This means that 93 0.3% of the power supplied by the source goes up as heat and only 6.7% is utilized by the load. 
It is not a very efficient solution, but it is a very inexpensive one. Enough of that. Let's work now with the mirror of the voltage divider, current divider. In this case, the same way that you can divide a voltage between two resistors in series, you can divide a current between two resistors in parallel. And the question is, what percent of the total current will flow through R1? R1 who? This R1. That current I1 is a percent of the total current I. Yes. What percent is that current I1 of I? Let's see. That is a current divider. We begin with a current divider and the total current connected between nodes A and B. The voltage between A and B is VAB and it's the same in both resistors R1 and R2. The current in the first resistor R1 is given by Ohm's law. What is that? VAB divided by R1. But the current in the second resistor, I2, is also given by Ohm's law. VAB, the same voltage, divided by R2. You can apply KCL to this little Gauss surface and say the total current is the sum of I1 plus I2. Definitely. Substitute the expressions for I1 and I2 and look what you get. Factor out VAB. And uh, now we have an expression of the total current as a function of VAB. But what we were looking for is what percent of the total current is I1. How am I going to do that? Divide this equation at the top for I1 by the equation at the bottom for I. Divide them and this is what you get. VAB cancels out. Simplify a little. And this is what we get. I1 is the same percent of the total current that R2, the resistance in the other branch, is of the total resistance R1 plus R2. You say, what, 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 what? The current in the resistor 1 is proportional to the resistance in the branch 2? Yes. Hmm. Let's say that again. The current in R1 is the same percent of the total current I that the resistance in the other branch, R2, is of the sum of the two resistors, R1 plus R2. Let me give you a real-life analogy to bring this home, at least to allow us to memorize this expression. Imagine you're driving along a road and you find yourself a bifurcation of the road and you know that you can get to your destination taking either of the two roads, the one on the left or the one on the right. However, the more potholes in the road on the left, the more cars are going to be taking the road on the right. Correct? In electrical terms, if those are wires, the higher the resistance of that path, the more coulombs of charge that will be choosing this other path. Or, what is the same, the bigger the current in this other path, the higher the resistance of the path on the left, the bigger the current in the path on the right. In formulas, the one we got. The bigger the resistance R2, the bigger the current I1. Let's take another look at the current divider. This time we use conductance. This time we represent each one of the two resistors in parallel in the current divider, not by its resistance, but by its conductance, G in Siemens, uppercase S. By the way, I like this formula better. The voltage between the VAB is common between the two resistors, G1 and G2. The current in G1, I1, is given by Ohm's law. Of course, that current I1 is G1 times VAB. And the current I2 in the second resistor again is given by Ohm's law. I2 is G2 times VAB, the same voltage that is common between G1 and G2 because they are in parallel. Using KCL at this Gauss surface, we find the total current in the parallel I. The total current is the sum that can be written like that. But what we are interested in is finding what percent of the total current I we have in 
I1. I1. How much is it? Divide this expression by this other one and we get, simplifying VAB, that the current in G1 is the same percent of the total current that its conductance, D1, is of the total conductance. Easy to remember. The current in branch 1 is the same percent of the total current that the conductance of that branch 1 is of the total conductance. Now, what happens if we have more than two resistors in a voltage divider? And this I leave to you as an exercise. Demonstrate that if instead of two resistors you have n resistors in series between nodes A and B, the voltage in resistor K of that group is given by this. The voltage in resistor K is the same percent of the total voltage and that the resistance is of the total resistance. And also this other one. Demonstrate that if there are n resistors in parallel in a current divider between nodes A and B, the current in resistor K of that group is given by this expression. In other words, the current in resistor K is the same percent of the total current of the divider that its conductance is of the total conductance of the whole group of parallel resistors. To close this session, let's have a tutorial time on current dividers. In this circuit, we want to find out what is the current in the 5 ohm resistor I sub X. That current happens to be the current divider of the total current in the source IS. So if we find IS first, we can use a current divider to find IX. What is the current in the source? A 7 volts divided by the total resistance seen by the source, which is 3 ohms in series with a parallel of 4 and 5. There you go. 7 volts divided by 3 ohms in series with 4 in parallel with 5. We know that 4 in parallel with 5 is 4 times 5 divided by 4 plus 5. We do the math and that is the current in the source, 1.34 amps. And that current would be divided between the resistors 4 ohms and 5 ohms. And 5 is going to get as much current as 134 multiplied by the resistance in the other branch 4 divided by the sum this way. That total current in the source times the resistance in the earlier branch, 4 ohms, divided by the sum 4 plus 5. And that is your current, Ix is 0.596. Let's do this away, but with our calculator. We want Ix, we need to compute Is. Let's proceed, this is the expression. Ix is going to be, take the total current in the source, 7 divided by the total resistance multiplied by the current divider. 4 divided by 4 plus 5. Let's do the math. In the calculator, I enter 7 volts, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, and 5 ohms. 4 go in parallel with 5. With this key, this one, that is 2.22 ohms plus 3 in series. That is the total resistance seen by the source. Divide, that is the current in the source, 1.34 amps. Now the current divider, 4, 4, 5. Add 4 and 5, divide 4 by 9. That is a percent of the total current that will flow through the 5 ohm resistor, 44.4%. Multiply, that is your solution, that is the current in the resistor on the far right, 0.596 amps. And that is all my invisible friends. I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. Thank you very much and I hope to meet you again in our next video.